The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L I B S Y N.com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Comedy, continuing America's love affair with comedy and those lovable characters that made us laugh. We now go back to the early days of radio comedy and our imaginations with our featured comedy presentation. The Jello program starring Jack Benny with Johnny Green and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Goody Goody. you have to take on faith, such as the fact that the sun will rise tomorrow. But when you can prove a thing yourself, it's a pleasure to do it. You've heard me talking about Jell-O week after week, but just the same, you don't have to take my word for Jell-O's extra rich fruit flavor. You can prove it for yourself with this simple triple test. First, open a package of Jell-O, and right away you smell the delicious fruit fragrance the radio of those delicate Network powdery is crystals. Brought to you in part Second, by Liberated dissolve Syndication. Jell-O in warm water Podcast and enjoy publishing that made easy. Fresh Lips fruit aroma again. Third, that's L-I-B- taste Jell-O. S-Y-N. Taste that flavor. As delicious as Welcome fresh fruit. Welcome to the fruit. old time radio rich, network white comedy. White comedy. Continuing that's America's Jell-O and only Jell-O. No other Jell-O deserves to have Jell-O's new extra rich fruit flavor. So whether you're ordering Jell-O at your grocer's or in hotels or restaurants, order by name. Insist on the one and only Genuine Jell-O. <laughs> and now we bring to you late of the Ringling Brothers Circus, Jack Benny and his troupe of aerial artists. Ladies and gentlemen, my first trick will be, uh, I mean, Jello again. Don, you make me feel like an acrobat, mm, aerial artist. Well, uh, this is the air, and we're all artists, aren't we? Well, we're all entitled to your opinion, Don. <laughs> the way you said it, people will think I'm hanging from a trapeze. Well, maybe that's where you should be hanging from. After this, Don, just introduce me and let me say the funny thing. You know, I'm the comedian. Oh, yeah? Well, let me hear you say one funny thing. Charlie Chaplin, man. <laughs> That's good. He is funny. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Jack. Who's he kidding? <laughs> well, anyway, tonight, folks, we are starting a contest. A contest in which every member of your family can participate. Now, all that is required is a Harvard education, paper, and pencil. The paper and pencil are essential. You will have to write your answers clearly, and the first prize will be a... Come in. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Have you got the right time? Yes, it's uh, five minutes after seven. Thank you, sir. And other valuable prizes. <laughs> Don, I can't be bothered answering that door. Where's Mary? I don't know. She didn't show up yet. She didn't? Well, that's fine. Give me that phone. Operator, give me Plainfield, 1987. Hmm. People show up whenever they feel like it around here. Hello? Hello? You've got the wrong number. <laughs> How do you know? I didn't say anything yet. I want to speak to Mary Livingston. I'm sorry, but she's here. Oh, she is, eh? Well, why don't you put her on the phone? She's too heavy. <laughs> oh, Ma, is that for me? Yes, dear. Hello? Mary, what are you doing home? The program has started already. Gee, is it Sunday night again? Yes. Oh, it's so cold, Jack. I thought I'd stay home tonight. Besides, I have to take care of Father. Well, what's the matter with him? He sprained his ankle last night trucking. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I don't believe you. What's that? That's Father limping around. <laughs> Sit down, Pa. Well, you better get over here, Mary. And another thing, Jack. I have to look after Grandma. She's in bed with a cold. Oh, is it very bad? Is it? We had to put the other twin bed on her chest. <laughs> well, that ought to fix her up, huh? And that's not all, Jack. The baby has the measles. She has? What are you doing for her? I wrote the swellest poem. 
Measles, measles. Dear old measles. How you... Never mind that. Now, you get over here, Mary. I need you on the program. Oh, all right. And make it snappy. I'll be there with bells on. Goodbye. Goodbye. I tell you, Don, there's no discipline around here. Isn't it awful? Come in. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Have you got the right time? I just gave it to you. It's five minutes after seven. <laughs> I know, but there are two of us. Come on, Joe. <laughs> What is this, anyway? Hello? Hello, Jack? Yeah. This is Kenny Baker. Where are you, Kenny? Oh, at my hotel. It's awfully cold out. If you don't mind, uh, I'd, I'd rather not come over tonight, Jack. You get right over here. Where are you living? At the Trans Lux. The Trans Lux? <laughs> well, that's yes. a movie theater. Oh, no wonder they throw me out at 12 o'clock. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, you grab a taxi and rush right over here. I don't feel good, Jack. I caught a cold last night. Oh, you did, eh? Where were you? Oh, I got on a ferry boat and went to New Jersey. Oh, you went to New Jersey, eh? Yeah. See, they speak the same as we do, don't they? <laughs> what a dope that is. Listen, Kenny, if you don't get over here right away, you're fired. Oh, all right. Bye. Hmm, who does he think he is? Come in. Here I am, Jack. <laughs> Hello, Kenny. You got here quick, didn't you? Yeah. Where are we on the program? I just called you up, remember? Oh. Any trouble with you, too? Well, now, look, Reed. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> Say, Jack. Jack, do you mind if I don't show up tonight? Well, what's the matter with you? I've got laryngitis. You got what? I've got laryngitis. Laryngitis. Say, I had it two weeks ago. I'll tell you what to do, Johnny. Take a glass of hot water and lemon. I haven't got any lemon. What have you got? Laryngitis. <laughs> take some hot water. Let's take some hot water and salt and gargle. It'll do oh, good. Okay, Jack. <laughs> Sounds like a German comedian. Huh? <laughs> well, how do you feel now? Much better, Jack. <laughs> Much better. Come right over. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> well, we ought to get this program started pretty soon, I think. Hello, Jack. Mary, what's that? I told you I'd be here with bells on. Mm, before we hear from our sponsors, Playboys. <laughs> introduce our guest star of the evening, one of America's foremost speakers, Mr. John Wilson. Thank you. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am not here to take up your time discussing politics. We know that. <laughs> I am not here to eulogize Jell-O with its six delicious flavors or tell you that it is the largest selling gelatin dessert in the world. I am going to let Jell-O speak for itself. So let me take you to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Cecil Underwood. You will find them at the dinner table. Let us see what they have to say about our product. 
Well, Jenny, I'm so full of food, I can hardly talk. Our dinner was exceptionally good tonight. I'm so glad you liked it, Cecil. By the way, what time is it getting to be? Mm, it's almost eight. We have just about enough time to make the show. Uh, what are we going to see tonight, Cecil? George White Scandals. And they tell me it's one of the funniest reviews in town. Oh, I'm just dying to see it. I'll finish my coffee and... Uh... Uh, take your time, dear. I'll send for the car. And by the time it gets here, we'll be all ready to leave. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and millions of other people have said the same thing <laughs> Be sure to insist upon genuine jello. Look for the big red letters on the box. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce next that famous grand opera singer, Mr. I.L. Trovator, formerly of the Metropolitan Opera Company. Let us hear what he has to say about our product. Mr. I.L. Trovator. Signore e signore, mi fa molto piacere di essere qui con voi questa sera. Io vi saluto e sto molto bene perché mangio sempre cielo. Anche la mia famiglia sta molto bene perché sopra la tavola ci sta sempre cielo. E voi mangiate strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, lime and cielo. Well, thank you very much for coming up here. Now we bring to you a woman who has been a cook in the best family for the past 30 years, Miss Hetta Lettuce. <laughs> Miss Lettuce, how old are you? 27. Hmm. And you've been a cook for some of the best families in America? Yes, sir. Well, tell us, Miss Lettuce, in the 30 years you have been cooking, what dishes have you served mostly? Cups and sauces. <laughs> And there are many more people screaming for jello. <laughs> and now Kenny, who has been a baker for years, will sing alone from the motion picture A Night at the Opera. Oh, Kenny, what do you owe your success to? I don't know. I don't get much money here. <laughs> I can't get a testimonial from anybody. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> That glorify the sky A million lovers all tonight But here am I Alone Alone with a sky of romance above Alone Alone on a night that was meant for love there must be someone waiting who feels the way I do. Whoever you are, are you, are you alone? Alone on this night that we two could share. Alone, alone with your kiss that could make. And when you come, I'll promise to be your very own. Alone, alone with a heart meant for you. Kiss 
that could make sung by Kenny Baker. Say, Kenny, I want to compliment you. You know, your your voice sounds even better in New York than it did in California. Uh, what's the reason for this improvement? Well, we all get better, Jack. Gee, when I first saw you, I didn't like you at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Kenny, uh, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, now, uh, tonight, folks, we're going to offer... Come in. What time do you say it was, Mr. Benny? I told you ten minutes ago it was five minutes after seven. I know, but time marches on. <laughs> hmm. And now tonight, folks, we are going to offer something unusual in the line of a play. First, we try to get a midsummer night's dream. But up until a late hour, we could not get in touch with the author. <laughs> then we try to get Rose Marie. But Rose wasn't home, and Marie wasn't interested. Then we try to get three men on a horse. But the horse complained. Quiet. <laughs> So tonight we are going to present our own original drama called The Eternal Triangle. You know, folks, the kind of a play where the husband leaves home on a business trip and so forth and so on. Well, tonight we are going to present this drama in two scenes. First, in the year 1936, played by members of the present Jell-O Company. And the second scene will be 50 years later with the same cast. This will go on immediately after the next number, which will be played by Johnny Green. By the way, Johnny, you know you're going to be in our sketch, too. I was afraid of that. Oh, you can play the part all right. Look, Johnny, were you ever in love with a girl who was crazy about somebody else? Repeatedly. Oh. <laughs> that's all that's necessary. Play, John. Thank from the motion picture top hat played by Johnny Green and his boys with Johnny at the piano. For our play in two scenes, the eternal triangle. First, the year 1936. Curtain. Music, John. <laughs> At last, we own our own home, the 
cost me every cent I had, but it's worth it. Do you like it? Yes, but I wanted a diamond ring. Oh, I knew you'd like it. Look at those marble statues in the hallway, those beautiful paintings on the wall, and closets big enough to hide three salesmen. <laughs> it's lovely, dear. But, darling, I have bad news for you. What is it? I must leave at once for Pittsburgh on business. No. Yes. <laughs> Don't cry, dear. <laughs> If you're going to take it to heart, I won't go. Pittsburgh? Oh, dearest, must you go? Yes, darling, I'm going to catch the 815 train. Pack my bag. There you are. <laughs> that was quick. Now, before I go, I want you to promise me that you won't die of loneliness. I'll bet you eight to five I won't. <laughs> well, goodbye, sweet. And I want you to know that while I'm away, I'll always... Goodbye. <laughs> Sit down. Oh, uh, Lena. Yes, ma'am. Uh, fix me a horse's neck and remember, Mum's the word around here. With me, ma'am, it's in one ear and don't come out. <laughs> uh, who's there? It's me, Kenny. Has he gone? Yes. Come in, lover. Oh, gee, it's a thrill. I'm glad you're here, you great big playboy. <laughs> Sweetheart, I could hardly wait to see you. How long will your husband be gone? A week. Oh, then I can sit down. <laughs> Come here. Come here, my sweet. Who's that? I don't know. You better hide. Where will I go? Oh, uh, I, uh, uh, get over there by those statues. Stand still. Look like George Washington. All right. If it's my husband, you better cross the Delaware. <laughs> Come in. Uh, darling, I forgot to put my shoes on. It's snowing again. <laughs> Here they are. Thanks, dear. <laughs> and you know, I forgot something else. What? I forgot to kiss you. Hurry, I must catch my train. All right. <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. You better hide. <laughs> hide? I'm your husband. Oh, yes. Well, hurry or you'll miss your train. You better sneak out the back door. Goodbye, dear. And don't be lonesome. Has he gone? Who, my husband or Kenny? <laughs> what? I mean, he's gone to Pittsburgh on business. Then, dearest, I can tell you of my love. Are we alone? Well, practically. <laughs> I've walked through slush and snow to get here. Tell me, baby, whose little blue eyes are those? Your sweetheart. And whose ruby lips are those? Your dearest. And whose little nose is that? Your darling. Gee, I hope we don't ask to see statues. <laughs> Uh, just the canary. You should hear him sing. There's someone at the door. You better hide. Quick. Where will I go? Get behind that picture of Christopher Columbus. Uh, come in. Has he gone? Yes, Jack went to Pittsburgh, Kenny went to Washington, and Green went to Columbus. Are we alone? You should live so. Then let me turn you up jello with its six delicious flavors. Blueberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. You've got me, big boy. Who's that? He must be my husband. He missed the train for Pittsburgh. Good heavens, where will I hide? There's no more room. I'm getting out of here. So am I. So am I. Wait for me. Who's there, Leo? It's me, Lena. I mean, it's me, Lena. <laughs> I think I went to Pittsburgh. Are they gone? Yeah, sure. Come on in. Are we alone? Sure. Lena, my darling. Check my pumpernickel. And now, we will present the same scene played by the same Jell-O cast in 1986. Fifty years later, we hope. <laughs> Curtain. Music, John. <laughs> We own our own shack. It broke me, but it's ours. You better get the roof fixed before we drown. Listen, Battle Axe. Do you still love me like you used to? Yeah, like you used to. Well, I have bad news for you. I've got to go to Pittsburgh on business. Well, go on. Here's your hat and crutch. 
You're not going to be lonesome, are you? I'll give you three to one this time. <laughs> new dessert made with orange jello and called orange Bavarian cream. And though I'm no chef, this is so easy I can tell you just how to make it. Dissolve a package of orange jello in warm water and a chill until slightly thickened. Then add half a cup of whipped cream and a third of a cup of orange marmalade. Chill firm and unmold. Boy, it's swell. The color is sort of rich, creamy gold and the taste is top. Orange jello has a rich fruit flavor as delicious as ripe oranges. Combined with marmalade and whipped cream, you have a dessert to cheer about. Just be sure to make it with genuine Jell-O. Look for the big red letters on the package. They spell Jell-O. the 22nd program of the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And to my Cleveland listeners, let me say that I'm terribly sorry I had to cancel this week's engagement at the State Theater in Cleveland, owing to illness, but uh, do expect to be with you in the very near future. Meanwhile, I hope to see all of my Pittsburgh friends at the Stanley Theater Pittsburgh, week beginning this Friday, the 28th. Uh, tell them I'll be there too, Jack. Oh, yes, Mary will appear with me. Uh, say, Jack, where is Pittsburgh? Oh, just a little west of the Allegheny Mountains. Well, how do you get over the mountain? Oh, we'll find a way. Good night, folks. J-E-L-L-O. The selection Love and Bloom is from She Loves Me Not. This is the National Broadcasting Company.